Hello everyone. This video is a little bit different since it's not about the Eurorack module, but I think that it is still interesting to make a video about because it's related to audio and in my case it's something that I will use for my studio setup. The background is that I need some good speakers in my studio setup and I've been thinking about buying a pair of Yamaha studio monitors. But I also wanted a subwoofer and suddenly everything got really expensive. Luckily I had a couple of bookshelf speakers and a subwoofer from my home theater system that got dismantled when I got kids. So I decided to reuse those for this purpose instead. However, the old audio video receiver was too bulky and I only needed to have a 2.1 system, so I went shopping for a suitable amplifier. But finding a small amplifier with 2.1 support in a reasonable price range wasn't easy. So instead I went for a small Class D amplifier for right and left channel monitor speakers. And I ended up designing an active crossover filter myself. Since the subwoofer I'm using is active, I only need to provide a line level output from the crossover filter for that. Alright, so what is the purpose of the crossover filter then? The small bookshelf speakers are great for reproducing mid-range and treble sounds, but they are, however, not great for bass. But since the subwoofer is specifically designed to reproduce bass, we will need a filter that separates the bass frequencies from the mid-range and treble and route them to each speaker type. The frequency where the separation happens is the crossover point, and to fine-tune the performance of the systems, I would like to be able to adjust that using a knob. A Linkwitz Riley type filter seems to be the perfect choice for me and after looking around on the internet I found this really interesting design made by Rod Elliott and it can be found on his website, see link below in the description. It is designed around a 12 dB per octave state variable filter with a high pass and a low pass output. The design requires multi-gang pots, but that is possible to source, so I decided to go for a 4-gang 10k linear pot, and I had to adjust the surrounding component values accordingly to get a good working range for the crossover filter control. The next design choices were to use a 12V DC power adapter and use an extruded aluminium enclosure from Hammond Manufacturing that I bought 10 years ago for some project that I can't even remember now. Anyway, it's a little bit too big, but uh, it will work. Okay, so long story short, I adapted the design a little bit to work with a single 12 watt DC supply, and I also wanted a single RCA connector for the subwoofer. The PCB was made to fit the enclosure with all components mounted on the PCB, so the dimensions were 100 x 160 mm, which was way too big. However, during bringing up of the board, it turned out that I made a couple of big mistakes. The inputs were swapped on the number of the op-amps, and the crossover frequency knob worked the wrong way. The first problem was possible to fix using some Kapton tape and bodge wires, and I got it to work in my studio. But the project outcome felt almost like a failure, and I didn't want to make a new board spin to fix the stupid errors that I made. The whole project could have ended in this sorry state. But then I realized that I needed a similar system in my living room for the TV and my streaming setup. So I decided to kick this project into life again and make a new design that I could use both in my studio and in my living room. This however meant that I had to redesign it a little bit since I needed to have two inputs and a volume control. So the active crossover filter more or less turned into a rudimentary audio preamplifier. So let's build this preamp by the book. And the book I'm talking about is of course Small Signal Audio Design by Douglas Self. There are separate chapters in the book dedicated to different gain structures, tone, balance and volume controls. In my case I only need to add an input selector switch and a volume control. I have already employed the Baxandel volume control in my output module and I'm really happy with that but what caught my attention was this combination of a Baxandel volume control combined with a passive fader. Since I already have one 4-gang pot in the design already, why not add another one? But let me show you the schematic diagram of the design and I will explain how it works. Alright, so this is the main page of the crossover filter. But let's start with the input section first. And on the left side here we have the input jacks for the input sources. And, uh, next we have an input selector, uh, which is just a simple toggle switch. 
and we have some DC blocking capacitors and then we have the first stage of the volume control which is the Baxendel active volume control. And after that we have the passive volume control connected sorting in cascade here. And this is according to the design described in the book by Douglas Self. If we go back to the main page again, we have the state variable crossover filter here, uh, which has two channels, of course, and uh, we are routing left and right channel to separate output uh, jacks here. We have the subwoofer output, which is connected through a summing amplifier here. So we have a, a mixer where we mix left and right channel together. Uh, in the lower part here we have the power section with uh, some decoupling capacitors and we also have the power LED. And as you notice we have a quite high value of the resistor here because I want to adjust the brightness so it's not too bright. Especially in the um, living room scenario uh, where I want to have it like just glowing. And finally we have the power input section here where we have the connection for the DC uh, adapter. And with a ferrite bead and some extra filtering here. And here I divide the power supply into half to feed the virtual ground for the op-amps. Alright, so I used the same ID to collect all the components on the PCB. But it turned out that a suitable extruded aluminium enclosure would cost a fortune. So I shrunk the PCB a great deal and designed a new house in myself that I 3D printed in PLA. Now I could afford to build two of these, so I could recycle the first version. The expensive Hammond enclosure will be sent back to the stash for another 10 years or so. The housing consists of two identical parts that are used for top and bottom. My first design have rounded edges, but I could not get the edges meeting the build plate to look good, no matter what I tried to do, so I made the edges 45 degrees instead. Assembly of the PCB was very easy and I used thin film type for all resistors that was in the signal path to reduce distortion. I also used electrolytic capacitors for DC blocking and polypropylene capacitors for the filter for the very same reason. The front and back PCB panels is screwed into the front frame using M3 machine screws and I used threaded inserts in a design for the first time. Finally, we will need a 12 volt DC adapter with a 5.5 to 2.1 mm barrel jack to power the unit. The power consumption is around 150 milliamps, but the smallest one I could find was outputting uh, an half amp. So this is what the final product looks like. I printed the enclosures in black and red filament, but I will probably go for the red one, since I think it looks a little bit more interesting. I have no idea if anyone else wants to build something like this, but the files for this project is available on my GitHub. See link in the description. So I hope you found this little side quest interesting. Thank you for watching, and I see you soon again. Goodbye.